Good morning. Good morning. This has been a day that we've been waiting for for a very long time. What a joy it is to have you present uh, with us this morning. I want to run through some, some quick announcements. Um, there will be a meeting uh, tomorrow, March 22nd at 1 p.m., and we're talking about whether uh, the church, it is feasible for the church to do a garage sale uh, this spring, uh, which would be, I believe, around May 1st, um, or if we, we need to push that back. Um, so if you are interested and have some ideas of how we can get this uh, garage sale accomplished, I've got two years of stuff gathered in my house that I am looking forward to giving away um, and regaining a few closets. Um, so that is tomorrow, uh, March 22nd at 1 p.m. Also, the Holy Week schedule is, uh, is in the bulletin, and this might be the first time that, that folks have seen it. So Palm Sunday uh, will be much like today, uh, 8.30 a.m. worship here in the sanctuary, online and on the radio. 10 o'clock would be the drive-in, but it's going to be over at Calvary on Palm Sunday. Then on Wednesday, we have the online worship at 6 o'clock. Monday, Thursday, though, we have an in-person 6 o'clock worship and online. Good Friday, we have the 6 o'clock in-person Good Friday worship and online. And then something different that we've never done before. We're going to join with uh, Calvary Lutheran and do an outdoor Easter vigil around a bonfire on Saturday night. Um, so if, if you're thinking the crowd on Sunday morning isn't uh, your cup of tea, uh, we'd love to see you outside around a bonfire with an Easter vigil. Um, we are, if you remember, we had planned to do a joint Christmas Eve worship, and we actually had six worships, I think, planned, uh, and so that froze out, uh, but we're not thinking it's going to be a freeze out for Easter Vigil, so that will be on Saturday night at 8.30 p.m., and then Easter Sunday, 8.30 in the sanctuary, online, and radio, but then 10 a.m. is uh, the drive-in at the fairgrounds, uh, if that's if snow and all that other stuff doesn't hamper that. But the plan is we're going to be at the, the uh, fairgrounds starting on Easter Sunday and moving forward. And so we're looking forward to that too. Um, for in-person worship, we need folks to sign up to, to usher or to read the lessons. And you can access that on the website. You, you can see it there, the directions in the bulletin. Um, and then... A few kind of guidelines for our time here. Um, the, uh, the, one of the, the biggest ones is uh, after worship. Uh, we need you all. We love having you here. But as an impetus to get you out of here without mingling and talking a lot, we've got a 10 o'clock service planned in the parking lot. So we need you to move your cars. Um, if by chance you drop someone off at the four doors, uh, there will be a wall, kind of a windbreak up there. You can just pull up on the other side of the awning, and it will be a couple more steps, and, and someone would be there to help you if you need to. to, to that distance is a little bit more tricky. Um, of course, uh, you're doing well with the masks. Uh, worship is different. Um, you can hum to yourself. But uh, the singing is one of the things that's still being discouraged. And uh, offering their plates at the exit uh, when you leave worship. And an usher will also let folks out of their pews at the end of worship. Uh, so you can hang out where you are, uh, trying to stop the, uh, the, the backup that sometimes happens. And uh, the, the final thing is... We look forward to the time when we can shake hands and, and hug and greet one another. That's not here yet. Uh, so we as pastors won't be stationed kind of on your way out. Uh, just so, again so we can, we can um, stop the bottleneck. Uh, and it's not that we don't love you. All right. Um, let us rise and, and uh, worship. 
hum loudly or softly, uh, lift high the cross, 660. neglected one very important announcement, and that is Holy Communion and how Holy Communion will work this morning. Uh, instead of coming down the center aisle and going up to the altar, the ushers are going to release you to the side aisles, uh, and then you'll come down. The communion, uh, the folks giving communion will be standing here and here. Uh, you will receive the bread and the wine, and you can deposit your cup here and then return to your place down the center aisle, uh, trying to limit standing side by side. So you're released on the side, you come through, and you go back. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out, out your, your mercy, mercy over us. us. Our, our sin, sin is heavy, heavy and, and we, we long, long to be free. free. Rebuild, Rebuild what, what we have ruined and mend what, what we have torn. Wash us, us in your cleansing your flood. flood. Make, Make us, us alive, alive in the spirit, spirit to follow in the way of Jesus, as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, 
your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. From the one who is and who was and who is to come, and from Jesus Christ, the firstborn of the dead, grace and peace be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen, amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God. God, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. From 
the drear garden of his agony, the sinless one was dead. His followers all forsook their Lord and fled. was there but mocking faces and harsh words of hate the cruel soldiers the unpitying crowd despised of men rejected and forsaken oh was there by skirt is torn turn to him remembering never twas for you twas for you the stripes were
Our first reading this morning comes from the prophet Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, beginning with verse 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. We will read Psalm 51 responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash, Wash me, me through and through, and through from, from my wickedness, wickedness and, and cleanse, cleanse me from, from my sin. sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against, Against you, you only, only have, have I sinned and done, done what is evil in, in your sight. sight. So, so you are justified when you speak and write in, in your judgment. judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, Indeed you delight, delight in truth deep, deep within, within me, and, and would, would have me know wisdom, wisdom deep, deep within. within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let, Let me hear joy and gladness, gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your, hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with the bountiful spirit. Our second reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, beginning with verse 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was anointed, appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Please stand if you are able for the reading of the gospel. The gospel comes to us from St. John, the 12th chapter. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. 
Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be as well. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake and not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now is the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from heaven, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he will die. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. And I would love to welcome a couple of the little folks here. I'm going to change my plan uh, and have them sit where they traditionally would sit since they're of one family. Come on up. You can sit right up there. Good morning. So, it has been a year, probably, since I have seen you two. Do you think you've changed? You don't think you've changed? I definitely think your little sister has grown. Have you grown during this time? And I know that you gave my son a ride and this morning to church and when um, we entered the pandemic he was shorter than me and now he's taller than me so yeah we've changed um, have you changed in any other way like when you get a new friend do you change uh, I've changed oh you changed how old you are. And how old are you now? Four. Four. Yeah, and how old? Five. And you have a loose tooth now. Yeah, you know, losing the first tooth is kind of scary because we've never done it which is really important for what I want to talk about today, and that is sometimes change is hard. Sometimes we don't know what it's going to be like when, when we change. You don't know what it's going to be like when you lose your tooth, but you know what? I have a feeling that your mom and dad have lost all of their teeth, and they've gotten all new teeth. I know I've lost all of my teeth, and I've gotten new teeth, and those next teeth tend to be with you all of your life. But change can be scary. But if there are those who have already kind of been through that change, they can help us because they can say, you know what? I've been there, and I know what it's like. When, um, when we meet new people, sometimes we are also changed by the new people that we meet because 
maybe they like to play kickball when we always played frisbee. And maybe they like to sing and dance when all we ever did was sit in front of the TV. You know, so when we meet people, they change us. And change is not a bad thing. It's actually a really good thing. So I am so excited to see you too, and I hope that you have a great day. Thanks for coming up. You can go back. Did you remember coming up before? Yeah, you did. All right. <clears throat> it's also harder to get off the floor a year later than it was. You know, <laughs> I had some knee problems uh, right after Christmas, but I'm doing really well, and I wouldn't have been able to get off the floor <laughs> a couple of months ago. Um, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Will we ever get back to who we were pre-pandemic. I don't know if any of you are Minnesota Public Radio listeners, but uh, First Lutheran was highlighted uh, in a story that was done on Tuesday morning. I think it first aired at about 8.45. It was an interview that I did with uh, Kathy Werzer. She was in her closet down in the cities, and I was in my pajamas because uh, it was 7 o'clock in the morning. But she asked me, so your first sermon with everyone back, are you going to talk about the pandemic? And my answer to her, this is a clue that I hadn't done my sermon yet, my answer to her was, you know, we talked a lot about the pandemic in the first couple, two, three months of uh, living with covid I don't, I don't know if that's going to be the focus. It might come up, but I don't know if that's going to be the focus. Well, God always has a way of surprising us. Um, will we ever get back to who we were? Dare I say, I sure hope not. I sure hope not. Now, it's not to say that I can't wait until I can shake hands in the back. I can greet people at the door. We can hug each other. We're going to pass the peace a little later in the service, and it will probably be a, a wave or a smile that you can only see with because you know, your eyes move because your mouth is covered, or, or a peace sign, or I don't know what, what they have planned, uh, but we're going to pass the peace with one another, but not in a way that I hope someday we get back to um, as well. I can't wait until we can pack this place. I can't wait until we can sing, because that first song, Lift High the Cross, it's one of my favorites, and I would have sung it at the top of my lungs if that would have been the wise thing to do. But dare I say, I hope we don't go back to be who we were. Not because who we were was bad and who we're going to be is perfect. No, that's never the case. But I believe that there are people that have joined us on this journey over the last year that we don't even know their names yet. We've never even seen their faces yet because they've joined us uh, either behind a windshield or they've joined us uh, on their computer, Apple TV, Roku, whatever they're watching us on for example, in my conversation with Kathy Werzer, she's been to First Lutheran's drive-in worship. I didn't know that. She was behind the windshield one Sunday morning 
uh, whether it was five years ago, ten years ago, I don't know. But she said, when I saw your name come up as someone for an interview this morning, I was like, I know that church. I've been there. And see, as I talked with these young folks about when new people enter our lives, we sure better change because of them. Because if we don't, then it is we who are in the wrong. When you first meet uh, someone that you begin a relationship with, <clears throat> you come with your characteristics, they come with their characteristics, and uh, if by chance you become husband and wife, I hope you both change. I hope that a little bit of the good of this spouse rubs off and a little bit of the good of this spouse rubs off. Hopefully the negative things stay put or maybe even lessen, but we know that that's not the case either, that we get a little bit of the good and we might get a little bit of the bad, um, but we definitely are changed. And if we're not changed, I've seen a lot of divorces happen because someone didn't and wasn't willing to change the who or the way they were living before they got married because there's someone else joining them. Or if we don't change once children arrive, holy cow, that's a change in life. I, I tell my children, it's, I call it the missing years because the only movies I got to go to were movies that I could bring them to and so I missed, you know, a decade of all the movies that I wanted to go to. But I've, I've gotten there in this last decade. We've watched them together. Um, people have joined us, and we will change because of it. Or otherwise, we're in for some problems. There was a church that I write about in preparation for today that was in a community that had doubled in population in the course of the last 12 years. Um, this congregation, however, had been in a 12-year decline. And uh, they brought in some professionals who asked the congregation members a question. Um, if you continue to do what you are doing right now, will you, A, B, or C, will you grow? Will you stay about the same? Or will you decline? And the answer came back, um, those who believed that they would grow if they didn't change anything about what they were doing were 41%. Those who believed uh, that they would probably stay about the same was 45%. 14% of the people said they believed that their congregation would continue. They just had 12 years of decline. Continue to decline. Well, folks, that is the uh, definition of insanity. It is doing the same thing and expecting different results. The Lutheran Church has been, um, has been a denomination, unfortunately. I mean, we've got a lot of really powerful and good things going for us, but it's been a denomination that um, has done evangelism in this way. You come when you're able and want to, and you become just like us. Ludifisk loving, sauerkraut eating Lutherans. But, did you see what happened in our gospel lesson today? 
there were some Greeks. Now, notice they're not Jews. There were some Greeks who came up to Philip and said, we want to see Jesus. Philip then brought them and went to, to um, Nathaniel. I believe it was Nathaniel, right? Of course, I could never find it when I'm looking for it right off the bat. Andrew! They brought him to Andrew, which was actually the first thing in my head, but I second-guessed myself. They brought him to Andrew, and uh, Andrew then and Philip brought him to Jesus. Greeks, not Jews. Most of the New Testament, after the Gospels, contain and deal with the changes that happened and all the angst that those who were Jews who became followers of Jesus and became Christians had to go through. Read Corinthians. Uh, the Jews were saying, you Greeks who are coming, you have to be circumcised in order to be a Christian. No circumcision was necessary to be a Jew, but to be a Christian, now that's a different story. What shall we eat? Because the Jews had a very strict code on what could be eaten. The Greeks did not. And you know where the answer came out? Jesus himself said, it's not what goes in that defiles a person. It's what comes out that defiles a person. Will we be who we were? I certainly hope not. And I'm really excited about who I believe God is creating us to be. I've talked in the past here recently about, about a relationship that, that we are continuing to further with the students over at Bemidji State University and Northwest Tech and the students that are here living among us. And I have said, I am so excited that they are going to teach us a different way to follow our faith. Not the right way or the wrong way. Not that we were wrong or right. But a different way. A way that looks a lot like Jesus going to the edges of the community seeking out the ones that the community had thrown away and embracing them, loving them, caring for them as well. Uh, we have three, actually we have four tech people back there now, and they're working hard, probably sweating bullets, because uh, service is now online and it will be going forward so the community that joined us who may live in I know that we have worshipers in Redwood Falls because I've spoken to them people who will join us when they can or they might never walk into the doors of this church will be members of this church how will we welcome them? How will we acknowledge them? How will we grow a relationship with them? I can tell you, to start with, we're not just going to shut the door and stop having worship available online. I know we have a member of this church who, uh, who flies around the world, and he is overjoyed he attends council meeting, even though he might be in China. He, uh, he worships when he can. 
Now, we are different today, and we will be. And I believe that God will bless our changes. Amen. Let us sing in our hearts as the sun with longer journey. 329. invite you to stand if you're able and join me in the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third day, day he, he rose, rose again. again. He, he ascended, ascended into heaven. heaven. He, he is seated at the right hand, hand of the Father, and, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, saints the, the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, sins the, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we now pray boldly for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You wash us through and through and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. God, give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, you form all humanity to bear your divine image, and you intend for everyone to live together in harmonious dignity. We pray for an end to racial and ethnic prejudice. Free us from the dread of difference. Free the church from constricting traditions. Free our society from centuries of violence against the other. Break down the walls that separate your people by color, culture, or religion. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God, you fill the earth, from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder, with your presence, and you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds, protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Help us to care and protect your creation for future generations. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O God. 
Your mercy is great. God, you sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Today we pray especially for John Syatz and those we name silently. We pray also for Betty Blueflat and Carl and Giselda Wold. We pray for those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, for those who need healing of mind or body, for those who are dying and all who grieve, including the families of Steve Wicks and Doug Smart. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Equip children and teachers in our Sunday school confirmation and learning ministries. Equip each of us to share God's good news through all of our days. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all of our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to share a sign of the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Also with you. You can do a little peace sign, a wave, a smile underneath your mask with your eyes. I have a brief announcement about our offering this morning. As you know, we have baskets that will be in the back, so instead of collecting the offering from the pews, um, there are actually four ways that you can give our offering today. One is by just dropping it off in the back on your way out. You can always mail it into the church. Uh, you can give online, or you can bring it yourself into the office. Um, I invite you now to sing in your heart as the grains of wheat our offering song, ELW number 645. 465, thank you. Oh, and you, you can sit down. <laughs> God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins, do this for the remembrance of me. We pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. The ushers will direct you to your stations.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 We'll join together in the hymn, Beautiful Savior, ELW number 838. I invite you to stand and receive the benediction. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you.